But I've seen the real you, and... And you're still here, and you're still trying to help. I get it, I really do. I scoop her into a hug. She tries to push me initially, but I hold firm, holding her closer to my chest. She eventually gives in and sobs unstrainedly, unstrainedly into my chest. <laughs> Finn here and welcome back to Doki Doki Blue Skies. And how many episodes are we in in this mod right now? Dang, 20 episodes? That's a lot. Well, that aside, last time me and Sayori agreed that we're going to have some sort of a sleepover. Well, since I made the choice that she'll be staying over for the night and uh, things are gonna get kinda interesting in a way, but that aside, you guys know the drill. And what time is it? It's Doki Doki time. After completing my bedtime preparations, I rarely slide into bed, thinking about the conversations that took place today. There's a lot... Uh, there's been a lot to take in, I suppose. Ever since Sayori became my girlfriend, there's always been a nagging fear that I'm getting into something that's way beyond me. Going to therapy has helped dispel that worry though. Today was relatively smooth and I'm hoping that doesn't change. Faintly, I hear the click of the front door followed by footsteps. I'm just gonna get changed, then I'll join you. As Sayori approaches the bed, I can't help but notice how nice her legs look in those shorts. Um, let's just say that she has thick thighs. <laughs> Won't you be cold in those pajamas? Nope. I have you to warm me up, remember? I'm suddenly very grateful that I have the blanket covering my body. She slides in next to me, pulling the blanket over herself. Slowly, she inches over to me and positions herself so that the top of her head lies be just below my chin. Resting her head on my chest, she looks up at me, moves in for a quick kiss, and giggles. At such pro proximity, I can hear her heartbeat. Her hands feel soft and warm against the fabric of my shirt. She's incredibly warm, but it isn't overbearing in the slightest. On instinct, I wrap my arm around my body and rest my face on top of, on top of her hair. Good night, Sayori. I plan to kiss on her forehead. Good night, Finn. Ah, that's cute. I guess that would be our first night as, you know, as lovers. Suddenly, I am pulled out of my sleep by what appears to be sobbing. As I slowly fight the grogginess, I am also aware of a slight dampness on my chest. Um, I'm pretty sure Sayori is having a nightmare or something. I'm not entirely sure. I hate it when Sayori has a nightmare. The feeling of powerlessness and the sound of her tears, the look of anguish on her face, it really hits hard. Oh, I knew it. Why can't you hear me? Aww. Sayori, I, uh, um... I mean, don't worry. We're we're going to uh, we're going to hug her, and uh, things will definitely be okay. So nothing to worry about. Uh, I need you. Come back, please come back. Sayori, I gently shake her. Shh, Sayori, it's okay. I'm here. It's okay. I hold her as she carries on whimpering. She clings to me even harder, shaking with fear. I can only imagine what's going on inside her head. I fumble for my phone, though a blinding glare tells me that it's 7.01. Oh, looks like we had a good sleep so far and I uh, guess we um, woke up in the morning by her sobbing, but I don't really mind, honestly. Finn? It's me, Sayori. You were just having a nightmare. Don't worry, I got gotcha. you. I stroke her hair softly as her crying subsides. That was horrible. What happened? She takes deep breaths and composes herself. Everything was so dark. You, Yuri, Monica, Natsuki, 
you're all there. But whenever I tried to talk to you, it was like there was an invincible bubble around me. None of you could hear me, but there's this shadowy figure that kept talking to me. Fresh tears fill her eyes once more. And it kept saying horrible, horrible things. It told me that I was useless and that everyone would be so much better off if I wasn't around. That you'd be much happier with Yuri. And the therapy is pointless and I'm just fighting a losing battle. It's nothing more than false hope, no matter how hard I try to believe otherwise. He snuffles. I tried calling out to you, to the girls, to anyone, but it, was, it, but it was just me and the voice tormenting me, telling me everything that I've been trying so, trying hard, so hard not to believe. It felt so real, Finn. So real. Just when I thought things might have, might have a chance of being okay again. I hate this. Why can't I be normal? And it's already seven. Ugh. I'm sorry, Finn. I just can't go to school today. It's okay. I won't go either. Huh? But what about... I couldn't care less about that. There's no way in heck that I'm going to leave you alone after what you've just experienced. I can miss the odd day of school. It's fine. She opens her mouth to protest, but upon seeing the steely resolution on my face, she reluctantly debates. I'll get you some water. Be back in a second. I don't know why I'm like this, Finn. Why is it that something as stupid as a little nightmare makes me feel this bad? I was hoping that, finally, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. But that was just naive of me, wasn't it? Uh... It's okay. You don't, have to have, you don't have to say anything, Finn. I know you might feel like you have to say some magical words, <laughs> magical words to make me feel better, but all you have to do is listen. Mm. What really hurt me was that the voice telling me that you much, that you'd be much better off with Yuri as her girlfriend. I'm trying really hard to believe that I'm a good girlfriend, and that I'm worth your time, but. Those doubts are always there, in the back of my mind. I know you'd never break my trust, but if... But I just wish I could convince my stupid brain to see it the same way. And it's so unfair, because I can see how hard you're trying. Please believe me when I say I really appreciate you, Finn. But I'm just so scared that it might be all for nothing. What do you mean? Well... What if I never get better? What if I'm always going to be like this? My pieces are all broken. You're trying so hard to put them back together. But what if you can't? What if you can't put them back together because some of them are gone? I don't have the answer for that. Well, if you can't put them back together, why not just create a new one? Or, well... I don't know if replacement's the right word for it, but... I don't know, it's either those or just create a whole new one. Create a whole new piece. I hate feeling like this. Feeling like I've lost something. Something that I'll never get back. No matter how good your support or well therapy goes. I can't remember the last time I, was, I wasn't so tired, Finn. That's the worst part about depression. The exhaustion that never goes away. An exhaustion that sleep can never fix. The only good thing about sleep is that it's an escape from my mind, at least for a few hours. Well, when I don't have nightmares, and I'm just so tired of it all. Tears slowly start leaking down her face once more. Her face looks utterly resigned. I wish I could just wake up one day and actually have hope. Hope? Well, don't you worry. Your hope is right here. And that's me, in a good way at least, and, well, in a nice, kind way. She faces me with a sad smile, her cheeks glisten with tears. Actual, genuine hope. A hope that maybe 
just maybe things might be okay. Just when I begin to think that could be true, days like these happen. I hate these days. I hate these days so much. Therapy is already hard enough, and these nightmares make me feel like what little progress I've made has been reset. All of the doubts that I try so hard to keep in check break free and they're merciless. I wipe away a few of her tears and gently grasp her hands in mine. We will get through this together, Sayori. Just like I said, I don't care how long it takes or what we have to endure. That's a promise. But I'm never going to stop until we see this through. She looks away. Why is it that I never felt like I'm actually getting through to her? I have to try and stay positive for both of our sakes, even though seeing her like this is one of the most more demoralizing things on the planet. No matter what, you'll never be alone in dealing with this. And if your pieces are broken, we'll create new ones. Hey, that's what I was. <laughs> that's what I was thinking, and I just said few a uh, few minutes ago. <laughs> oh yeah, big brain. I can imagine how it is for you. Really, Finn? How could you possibly know what it's like to feel how I'm feeling? Uh... Exactly. You don't. You don't know what this feels like. The constant numbness, the constant feeling that no matter what I do, this shadow will always be here. Crying myself to sleep, waking up in tears, having to fake everything because you're terrified that people will see the real you. Well, um... I don't really mind because, how am I going to say this? I mean, we already resolved this with Yuri as friends, so maybe now it's the time to show the real you and of course, it's time to put depression to rest. I don't know how things work really, but um, well, uh, I, uh, I, I dealt with situations like this before and uh, well, all we have to do now is just, you know, stay positive and uh, we'll just, just help them out, you know? But I've seen the real you, and... And you're still here, and you're still trying to help. I get it, I really do. I know you're trying to help, but it's hard to see your encouragement as anything more than just empty words. This isn't something you can just... you can fix just by saying the right stuff. She bursts into tears once more. As... as much as I w wish it was. I scoop her into a hug. She tries to push me initially, but I hold firm, holding her closer to my chest. She eventually gives in and sobs unstrainedly, unstrainedly into my chest. I'm scared, Finn. I whisper softly in her ear, ear as I gently stroke the back of her head. I know, Sayori. I'm scared as well. We both fall silent, with the only sounds per permitting the room being the sound of her anguished cries. Sayori? She mumbles into my chest. I am sorry if I say the wrong things. I just... I just don't know what are what the right things to say and do are. This whole thing is just totally alien to me, and after you told me that our, my words are pretty much empty. Well, I'm starting to doubt everything. She winces slightly as she bites her lip. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. It came out much harsher than I, ex than I intended. I want to believe what you say, I really do. I know that I shouldn't feel jealous and I shouldn't compare myself to the other girls. I want to believe all of the lonely... <laughs> no, 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 not lonely. I want to believe all of the lovely, reassuring things you say to me. But I can't. I know that what you're saying makes sense. It's just... Internalizing it is a whole other, st un other story. It's not your problem. It's all me. Being unable to get over this stupid thing. Depression isn't just a stupid thing, though. It's a... I know it's much more than that, Finn. 
I just can't help how angry it makes me. I just want to be normal, like everyone else. It's like I'm not in control of my own body. The depression is the one that chooses my mood for the day. It chooses how I react to things and what I say. Like the day you made me breakfast. I really wish that I was appreciated from the start, instead of being irritated that you were in my room so early. It's so unfair. And I keep going on and on about it, and... Don't ever apologize for venting your f about your depression, Sayori. I know that my words probably don't sound as reassuring and helpful as I want them to be, but one thing that'll never change will be my, my willingness to listen. You've been battling this al alone for so long, so it's only fair that I can be a shoulder to cry on. Problem shared is a problem half, right? Well, it's obviously not that simple in this case, but it's something. She sniffles and nods, <laughs> nods slowly. It does help to at least be able to talk about it. That's something then. Having you around, as much as I don't think I deserve your support, it does make a difference. That makes me happy then. Really? Yeah, it might not be a huge help, but it's still some help, surely. She pauses to reflect. Yeah, I guess so. She nods and shifts herself so that her head lies on my lap. Once she settles, I absentmindedly stroking her hair. My mom told me there would be days like these. Hmm? Oh, well, back in November, after our fight, I, uh... Well, I was a bit lost. I didn't know how to turn to, so I asked mom for advice. What did she say? She said if you date someone with depression, you'll have good days, like the one we've had before, and bad days, like today, I guess. Sayori falls silent once more. She looks a little reflective, and thankfully doesn't mind, seem to mind that I told mom about her condition. Does she have depression herself? She dated someone who had it in the past. It's kind of spooky how accurate her advice was. What was it? She told me about how important it is to be patient and understanding for a start. Which you have been. Eh, I don't know. I still have no idea what I'm doing and I don't really know if I'm saying or doing the right things. I thought I was, but after you told me that my words are just empty. I'm starting to doubt everything. A lot of regret flashes across your face. Sorry, I didn't mean that. For what it's worth, you've been a great boyfriend, Finn. It's just not fair on you. Your heart has always been in the right place, and you put up with my moods. Well, that's reassuring to hear, at least. And all I can do is... and. And all I can do in re return is snap at you for the smallest of things. I knew it wasn't going to be easy. Mom did warn me. And being honest with you, it sounds like these that make me realize just how serious depression is. But I'm glad I got the wake up call sooner than rather and later. Neither of us really know what we're doing, but at least we have each other, right? It's also our first relationship, so we've been re we've been <laughs> we've really been fighting an uphill battle from the start. I've definitely enjoyed my time with you so far, and you think I'm a good boyfriend, so we could be doing a lot worse. I don't know. Could we? I feel like our relationship has just been putting you <laughs> I feel like our relationship has just been you putting up with me. Do we have a future together? Yes. Her words cut deep, knowing that she has these doubts, especially this early on. Of course, we have our future together as a, um, as lovers and potentially husband and wife, who knows. What do you think? Honest question. I don't know. Do you want us to have a future together? Yes. So do I. But what about when we start our last year in school? Or when we leave school? What if you go to university and I don't? What if- Sayori, listen to me. 
Let's just take our relationship one day at a time, okay? You could probably drive yourself crazy by trying to predict the future. Do I know if we'll end- <laughs> Do I know if we'll be together in a year? Truthfully, I don't. I have no clue what life will be like after school, but there's no point worrying about it now because it doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, yeah, you're right. She gives a short, humorless laugh. I'm glad that one of us can think rationally. Nah, remember how I thought I, we'd let a spirit loose in the classroom back in October? That was the polar opposite of rational. <laughs> I really enjoyed that day. It was nice to s it was nice to dress up in silly costumes and scare each other. A real throwback to our childhood. Definitely a highlight of the year, along with Christmas. <laughs> hey, yup, the uh the uh, the kiss under the mistletoe. That one right there is possibly my favorite hi highlight. There's something really satisfying about seeing someone light up when they unwrap a present. You've got them. Oh yeah, th those ones too. Especially the gifts, the uh, the the models gift. That one's also my favorite moment. I have the photo you gave me in my room, by the way. It makes me smile whenever I see it. Even when you're not physically around, you still make me happy. Please don't forget that. Thank you, Finn. I'll do my best. She'll definitely do her best, trust me. We'll get through this together. And, uh, school is back. <laughs> you nearly thought I was going to end the episode right there. No, no, no. We're still going to keep on going. It's about two weeks since that nightmare caused Sayori to have a breakdown. By this point in our relationship, I've really started to see what mom warned me about. I didn't realize how bad the days would be. We had a few therapy ses sessions since. As I was hoping, the sessions went smoothly. Well, as smoothly as they could go, I guess. Along her doctor prescribing her antidepressants, the therapist has given Sayori a diary which she's meant to use by recording her happy and sad thoughts. By recording her sad thoughts, he's working with her to see whether these thoughts are supported by facts, basically trying to challenge her depressive thinking. I'm no expert, but it looks to me like that's the kind of therapy she needs. It's not been as simple as it might seem, but to me it looks like steady, but surely progress is being made. Well, at least that's good because, well, if this is the therapy she needs, then I'm happy for her. To say the least, it's a huge relief. She's also tentatively mentioned that she'd like to start going to the sessions alone, although she isn't quite at that stage yet. Well, of course, because she still needs my company, just in case. Or, well, not just in case, well, always, I think, at least for now. She said she'd see how she feels by the time the next one comes about. Still, it's been really interesting to see what therapy really entails. Definitely an eye-opening experience. On the other hand, I think the other club members' girls are starting to get a little suspicious. There have been a few days where Sayori's depressive moods became a little more apparent in school and there were concern for her. Still, Sayori maintained her walls. I felt bad about how in the dark the other girls were, but it isn't my position to say what's going on. Hopefully Sayori will be comfortable telling them in her own time. Or, well, like, like I said before, I think when the time comes, uh, that would be the right time for it. But that was just like for me and Sayori, but for the other girls, we'll have to find out ourselves when the time comes. Also, given it's now February, we, I've had to pay a little more attention to school matters, namely the end of the semester next month. Oh, ho. oh man, really wish it would have ended, but as for me, I have my finals next month, so uh, yeah, uh, wish me luck, and hopefully I can keep my sanity together on that one, fellow knights. <laughs> uh, the pain and suffering that I had to go through. Sakurai has also been talking to students about their future plans. It's scary to think that next year is my final school year. Oh! Well then, um... I don't know how long MC or 
me, I don't know, would... I don't... <laughs> I just having these thoughts that I don't know if the final school year would might last until Sayori and I would be together or not, but I don't know. I'm sure we'll be together forever and ever. He wants to see me after the lesson ends, so for what it feels like the first time in forever, I've started to think about what I want to do after I leave school. Well, um, I guess I could pursue my dreams. Stay with Sayori, I think, or at least be together with her. And I guess some I guess some stuff, I think. As the bell rings, he calls me over. You have the same look that I had on my face when my homeroom teacher wanted to talk to me about my post-school plans. <laughs> I appreciate his use of humor in the situation. He's always been e efficient at helping me feel at ease, especially in situations where I feel out of my depth. If you don't know what you want to do, I wouldn't worry about it too much. After all, you're just a second year, so you have, so you do have another year to figure it out. Having said that, do you have any idea at all? To be honest with you, sir, I haven't really given it much thought at all. The past five months has been really well. They haven't really given me much time to think about it. Well, let's try this from another angle. Does higher education interest you at all? Going to university? Or would you perhaps be more inclined towards finding a job as soon as you leave school? I pause for a moment to think, trying to recollect what my parents used to tell me when we had this kind of conversation. University sounds good, although I'm not sure what I'd study. Well, I'm in college and uh... I don't know if college and university are the same thing, but I don't know, I, I'm, I'm assume it is, but well, I guess it could go for programming, I guess, unless if it's, well, <laughs> let's not talk about that one. He nods approvingly. You'll definitely find it easier to find a job if you have a degree under your belt. That's good to know then, all I have to do is pick a subject, I guess. I know it can be a little daunting, especially when you're sure. My advice would be go with the subject you enjoy and do well in. Far from me to be biased, but you're a rather talented historian. I chuckle. What can you do with a history degree though? The skills you get from a history degree can transfer to a lot of other fields. A lot of historians that I knew went into journalism, academia, teaching, or even the law. Obviously, I'm not biased in any way, but history is the best subject to study. My science teachers say otherwise, sir. He grumbles to himself. Those haughty scientists, if they could just pry themselves away from their Bunsen burners and glass vitals for five minutes. Ahem. <clears throat> anyway, it's good that you've got a... Eh, it's good that you've at least got a vague idea of what you want to do. There's no rush or anything. Just take some time to think about what you like to study at university. We can always have another discussion later. Will do, sir. Thank you. With the conversation over, I make my way to the club room for lunch. Hey guys. Oh, hello Natsuki. Long time no see. Natsuki gives me a curt nod while Sayori gives me a wan smile. The door opens once more and Yuri walks in. Sayori's already weak smile wavers even further. She doesn't dislike her by any means, but it's clear that the, jealous, that the jealousy is still an issue. I sigh inwardly. I have no clue on how to solve that issue, given I don't think Sayori is willing to disclose her depression with Yuri. As I pull out my food, I notice that Monika has barely greeted me. Her face is glued to her laptop with a terse look on her face. Everything alright, Monika? She finally drags her eyes off the screen and looks at me. It seems like she just only realized I'm all, I'm talking to her. Yeah, uh, sorry. Just had to sort out some important emails. How are you? It's easy to spot from a mile off that her f smile is forced. I decide not to push it. Not bad, not bad. Sakurai was just talking about me about what my plans are after high school. I think it's a... Oh, <laughs> sorry, I thought that was me talking. You think it's common practice for all the teachers to ask their students, given how second years and the end of the semester isn't far off. Yeah, 
I bet that was fun. We don't have to bother with that stuff just yet. Lucky, I still don't really know what I want to do. I told them I wanted to go to university, but I can't really decide what I want to. Starting to really start to realize that I probably should have given this more thought. That's a little irresponsible, Finn. Your future holds so much weight and time flies by so quickly. My face heats up a little from embarrassment. She's right, of course, but it seems like her judgment is coming out of nowhere. I look at Sayori, half expecting her to jump to my defense. She doesn't, though. Instead, she idly pokes at the spot at the table. The other girls look curiously at us. They can sense that something is up. I don't want to draw too much attention to Sayori, so I try to deflect their curiosity. How about you, Yuri? Any ideas? I... I decided to I wanted to study Japanese literature at university. Fitting choice. Well, as, uh, as expected of the... Well, aside from the horror stuff. Well, the more sophisticated connoisseur. I... Well, I, um... I like that. <laughs> Yuri smiles to herself. <laughs> I suppose it comes as a surprise to no one. I can imagine it can be both an exciting yet daunting experience. University? Yes. On, on the one hand, there's the opportunity to meet many like-minded people, all with the same passion. Yet there is so much independence, especially if you opt for a university far from home. And with that independence comes a lot of responsibility, and I imagine a fair degree of uncertainty. Who knows what life will be like for all of us when we've left school? My question hangs in the air as the conversation lapses into silence. Monica mutters something under her breath. How about you, Monica? I'd imagine you've got a lot of choice, given how you excel in pretty much every subject. She finally closes the laptop lid with a sigh. My parents have been hounding me with the same ex with the exact same questions for months now. I'll probably take over your business. There's a hint of what sounds like bitterness in her voice. Granted, I know very little about her life. Well, at least anything beyond surface level, so it's a bit baffling. We'll just have to wait and see. An awkward silence descends upon the room. Clearly, it isn't just me who detected Monica's slightly hostile tone. Luckily, Yuri breaks the silence. Are you alright, Sayori? You've been rather quiet. Yeah, that's not like you at all. Even Monica glances over at Sayori's direction. Oh, I'm fine. Just kinda tired, that's all. Don't worry about me. The other girls don't look convinced in the slightest, but they don't have <laughs> have much chance to press her as the school <laughs> as the lunch bell rings. I remember being her being in her in their position last semester. And boy, I do not envy them. As the end of the school day rolls around, I find myself wandering down the corridor waiting for Sayori to finish. Along the way, I bump into Monica. Hey Finn. Oh, hello Monica. She keeps her voice low and quickly look <laughs> she keeps her voice low and quickly and quickly looks around before speaking. I can tell what she's going to ask me. Is Sayori okay? Well then, um I guess she kinda noticed, I think. And I'm not sure for well, Yuri and Natsuki did notice, but I don't know though, maybe, just maybe, they might notice her depression or, well, especially her mood and all. But I don't know really, because, well, I'm gonna end the episode right here, fellow knights. I'm sorry, but don't you guys worry, there will always be another episode. So if you guys like what you're seeing and enjoy what you're watching, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe if you haven't already. It'll help me a huge bunch in making more content like this. And click on the bell notification to be notified. And if you want to play this mod for yourself, as always, link in the description below. And with that being said, thank you guys all so much for watching. Finn the Dark Knight signing off, and I'll see you guys next time. As always, stay awesome and have fun, fellow knights and adventurers.